guys. Am I still on? Yeah. All right, well, this is the second Sunday of the month, and one of the things that we like to do is to do a little bit of time of prophetic ministry. If you're not familiar with prophetic ministry, I always want to try to give a little bit of teaching or education before we get started because I know that this is one ministry that has been very um, tainted and, and uh, abused or done poorly or wrongly, and we're trying to redeem the prophetic. Amen? The prophetic is about being able to hear the Lord. And we believe that everyone has capacity to hear the Lord because you have Holy Spirit inside of you. In the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, prophets, if they spoke as for God and it was wrong or did not come to pass, they were stoned. Because no one else could hear God. So if they said it was from God, the people had to obey. So if it was wrong, that's how you knew someone was a false prophet. Okay? In the New Covenant, and the New Testament prophecy is about edifying, exhorting, and giving comfort. And it is always supposed to encourage, uplift, comfort, and draw you to God, not to the person prophesying. Amen? So in the prophetic too, you'll see more scripture in the word about you learning to judge the word, to test the spirit. Now, everything is established both in the old covenant and the new covenant by two or three witnesses, right? So when someone releases a prophetic word, you get to be one of the witnesses, does that testify to me what you just spoke over me? And then to be able to have a couple other people be able to say, yeah, that sounds like God. How do we know? We know the word and we know his character. It has to line up with his word and his character. Now, you might get a word of knowledge, which is not prophecy. Word of knowledge is factual information that I should not know about you. God could have given me that, but that's not prophecy. What comes next should be prophecy if the Lord is giving a prophetic word. But if he gives me a word of knowledge about your flaw or a failure or a sin, that is not something to be spoken. Because that's not what the Father is going to speak. He always speaks solution to a problem. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, how we learn how to hear the Lord might be different amongst different streams. We know people come from all different walks of life and how you hear the Lord. Primarily from the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's what scripture says, right? But the more you get to know somebody, don't you really know them? Know their character, you know how they speak to you, you know their nuances. I could see my son walking far off and I'll know that that's my son and not somebody else's son by his gait, by the way he walks and really by the way he runs, you know. So there are certain characteristics that you'll be able to tell when you know someone intimately, right? If I pick up the phone and I start talking to my husband, I don't have to say, hello, Chris, this is Cindy, your wife. He knows my voice right? So what we try to do is we try to impart everybody that's the kingdom. All of the kids get to play in the kingdom. We all get to have access. We all get to be able to participate in the gifts. And Paul said that you eagerly seek all the gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. So we believe that as leaders, we are to equip the saints for the work of ministry. It is not just about those of us on a platform. Okay, or those with the microphone. But we are building teams. We are building people who have gone through some training and are willing to be corrected by us in leadership. And so I've asked a couple of those people to come forward. You guys both come on. And we'll do this every second Sunday of the month. So here's, here's the thing. We're kind of practicing still, okay? We don't always get it right 100% of the time. It is your decision, your judgment, your testing of the word to go, does this sound like God? Does this look like God? Does this edify, exhort, or give comfort? then it's a prophetic word. It might just be an encouraging word. It might not be God. It might just be an encouraging word. But when God breathes on it and it gives fruit and life, that's God, right? Okay, so who wants to go first? Good morning. Okay, so last Sunday, Cindy came to me and said, hey, do you think you could prophesy over somebody on Sunday, next Sunday today? And immediately, I'm just like... <laughs> You know, but with all the teachings on Wednesday that we learn, I'm like, ah, I could do this. I could totally do this. So anyway, my, 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 the person I've highlighted, I'm going to go walk back to her. I don't know her name, but this happened last Sunday. Um, come up here. What is your name? Krista. I'm 14. So come on over here. We're going to go up front. This was so amazing. I'm going to tell you what. So last Sunday I'm praying during up there working, 
And I'm like, okay, God, let me do this right. Don't let me fall on my face because I've done it so many times. It doesn't feel good. So, But here's what. I saw this beautiful young woman just dancing. I've seen her dancing in the back. Last Sunday, she was dancing up here just in pure joy. And so I'm praying about this, and I saw her dancing in the throne room in a skirt of purple, beautiful fabric, beautiful woven fabric with this gold belt as she's dancing in front of our king. Just the beauty and the love that I saw was amazing. So then I'm watching, and then I'm looking at her head as she's dancing, flowing, and I see her crown is diamonds, very vibrant white, and I thought to myself, no, it doesn't match her belt because I like matchies, and it's just not matching. It's just not. So I'm trying to change the vision. It's not working out. It is, it's, you know, and so I went, you know, and so I'm thinking, no, God, it, it's got to be gold, really. But so her crown was all in white, vibrant. And so here's what I'm going to say is the word liturgical dancing came to mind. Do you know what that is? Okay, I'm going to share it with you. Um, liturgical dance is a type of dance movement, sometimes incorporated into liturgies or worship services as an expression of worship. Um, some liturgical dance has been common by in ancient times or non-Western settings, um, blah, blah. An example of the episode when King David danced before the Ark of the Covenant, 2 Samuel 6.14. So I see, you know, when I saw your crown being white, pure, your love for Jesus is so pure. It's so pure. And, you know, your dancing is so lovely, and your heart is so pure for Jesus. And so I bless you with your dancing. I bless you with your continued path of your love for Jesus because it's pure. It's pure. You are pure, and you're royalty with the purple. So, yes, you're loved. Okay. Do you have something to add to hers? So, Krista, real quick, go, you can go ahead and sit down, dear, if you want. <laughs> we don't normally call you all the way to the front, but that was something she really needed to impart to you. She's had it holding on for a really long time. You did great. No, you did great. Stay up here. Stay up here. Stay up here. Just nice. Okay. So, I just wanted to add to that. Um, there's power in your worship. And something I've been seeing over you since I first saw you, and I've said this over and over, but I really want you to get that the Father is wooing you into a deeper place of intimacy with him for it to bubble up out of you like you were made to be like a fountain and to pour it out. And you've been feeling contained or, or constricted in some way, and I release freedom over you. I release the freedom to dance and worship as a worship leader. You have full permission to dance all you want up here, all you dancers. Dancers, where's Vanessa and Erica? All, the, all you dancers, you have full permission. I know people want to hide in the back because they don't ever want to be like seen. We don't want to, we don't want to disturb anybody. We don't want to be a distraction. And I get that. But y'all, if a dancer is worshiping, how can they be a distraction to you? And if they are, close your eyes and just picture Jesus. But I, I release you. I release you into worship. I release you into dance. You don't have to. Okay? You and Jesus, you decide. But I release you. You have full permission to dance here. You have full permission to dance. Amen? And all you other dancers, you have full permission to dance. Okay? Um, good. That was good, Tina. Do you have one for someone? I just wanted to add that when she said, no, it has to be gold, but she said it was white, the Lord told me, I could hear it, the Spirit of God say, it's because of her purity. That's why it's white. So, better her than gold. <laughs> And so I just wanted, um, I got a word when Papa Jack was here that Sunday morning, and we were in intercessory prayer, and and it was heavy in my heart, and I just said, uh, I don't know if I'm going to say it or not, but the Holy Spirit just, I, yeah, yes, it is. This is a corporate word, and this is for the church, but it's also for the body of Christ, and, he, and what, what the Lord said was, stop asking for fire. 
ask to be refined. Ask for the refining fire. Because when you're refined, when his fire hits you, it's contained. And you receive power and you, re and you receive his fire. But when it's contained, because when he's refining you, he's bringing everything that shouldn't be there up to the top. And because when his fire hits you, it's so strong that, and what was it, that it could kill you. In a sense, it's not going to kill you physically, but it's, it's, I don't think we've seen it quite yet that strong. That when it hits you, it is contained, and you're able to contain it, not just for that moment, but it's with you always. And what I understood and what, what he explained to me personally I know you can't see these gold bowls clearly, but he gave me a vision of myself, and I'm going to share this because I, I feel it's for everyone. And I saw him, that he had made the gold bowl, and I saw him polishing the bowl. He kept polishing and polishing, and I asked, what is that? He goes, this is you. He goes, it's been through the fire. And I asked him, what are those, like, dents in it? I go, what is that? He goes, that is everything you've gone through. I said, but it's not perfect. He goes, no, it's everything you've gone through, and, but it makes a beautiful sound because he redeems everything we go through. And there's grace in the refining. He does not leave you alone. There is grace in the refining because he loves us that much that he wants to refine us. So, okay, so the scripture. Zechariah 39, and I will put this third into the fire and refine them as one refined silver and test them as gold is tested. They will call upon my name and I will answer them. I will say they are my people and they will say the Lord is my God. Thank you, Lord. So you say, I receive it. When you receive a word, you know, it testifies to you. It feels like it's stirring up you. You receive it. I receive that word. Thank you. I don't know this couple over here in the brown. Are you guys a couple or friends at least? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I don't know your names, but um, immediately I heard dairy farm. So I don't know if that's a word of knowledge, if you own a dairy farm or not. Do you own a dairy farm at all? Okay. So I have to ask because sometimes I get words of knowledge and I don't know the difference or it's both. But um, I, I hear the Lord saying that you have a dairy farm. Um, Again, this may not mean that you will in real life, right? There's spiritual meanings to these things. We know in part and prophesy in part. But what I, I just want to give you the revelation. I heard the words dairy farm, and then I saw them. I saw cows. I saw huge, like, they're milking, you know. And it's, like, industrial level. Like, this isn't, like, old in the farm days and you're doing it yourself. Like, it was uh, industrial. And what I feel like the Lord is saying is that you guys have a ministry, a particular gift and a ministry where it's like milk and honey, you know, the milk and honey is the promises of the Lord. And so there's the promises of the Lord that you've been stewarding and that he's been, uh, that he's, that you've been, um, what's the word, Lord, you've been contending for, that you've been contending for these particular promises. But the thing is, is the promises aren't just for you, the promises are going to go through you. But I really feel like because it's milk, I feel like it's for a younger generation. Because when we mature, we grow out of milk. You know, Paul says we, want, we don't want to just be feeding off of milk, we want meat, right, in the word. And so I feel like that you both have the ability to be able to feed people the word of the Lord in milk, meaning the beginners, um, those that may be first coming into salvation, maybe um, a stewardship of, of a younger generation, either in spirit or in age, I don't know which, but I bless that. I bless the ministry over them. Father, I thank you that it is big. It is huge, whatever it looks like. And please don't hear the word ministry as in like in the church. It doesn't have to be in the church. To, to ministry comes from the word administration. So it's the administration of the kingdom, wherever it is. It doesn't have to be in the church. But whatever it is your business is, whatever that is, there's something about the promises, feeding people in the next generation and feeding those particularly um, something good, something full of sustenance that gives life. So I bless that in you, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much.